What a day, huh? What a day. Um, <clears throat> a hearing conducted by one of the crazier people in, in the U.S. House is Daryl Issa from California, who happens to be, by the way, the richest uh, multi, 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 multi millionaire, possibly billionaire. Um, he's the one that, um, uh, I guess, invented or had the franchise on LoJack, the car theft thing. This is after he uh, was charged with car theft. <laughs> ah! So he has a hearing. You know all this by now. He has a hearing on contraception. A hearing on contraception for women. Was the hearing about condoms? No. It doesn't have any women testify. I, I looked at the picture. There are five guys sitting there. One is wearing a uh, yarmulke. One has a backward collar, maybe two, uh, two of them, uh, as Catholic priests. So you, you right away you know you got a Catholic and two Jews. Uh, the other two guys. Sounds like the opening line to a joke. You know, two Catholics, a Jew, and two other people walk into a, a house hearing. First one says, why are we here? The second one says, oh, this is about birth control. The <laughs> first one says, where are the chicks? The second one says, that's the point. Jesus Christ, where do we live? Where do we live? Where do we live? Oh, my God. Celibate men deciding what I can do with my ovaries. <laughs> I've already made that decision for you, right? Just kidding. Oh, my God, just kidding. Um, well, th those are the two priests. We don't know about the Jew and, and the two other guys. The two other guys, I don't know. They look like witch burners to me. I have no idea. I, I think my favorite was when one of the panelists, maybe it was Issa himself, said that the woman who was in the audience who was ready to testify, <clears throat> I love this, wasn't qualified, <laughs> wasn't qualified <laughs> to speak on the subject. She didn't have the same qualifications <clears throat> as these men did about how women should be able to use contraceptives. Play that, play that bit. Of, uh, we, we have some sound for you. This is later on today on Andrea Mitchell's program, a program on MSNBC. I know you've heard this a thousand times today, too. But all the major Republican candidates now have a billionaire backer. This is getting down to a battle between the point zero 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 six three of the American population. Uh, uh, that's 63 hundred thousandths of one percent. Uh, this is a fight between billionaires to see who's going to be the Republican nominee. Rick Santorum has a billionaire. His name is Freeze, Freeze something. He was interviewed by Andrea Mitchell. Uh, we'll just cut right to the chase on this interview. And this contraceptive thing, my gosh, it's so it's such inexpensive. You know, back in my days, they used bare aspirin for contraceptives. The gals put it between their knees, and it wasn't that costly. Uh Excuse me, I'm just trying to catch my breath from that, Mr. Freeze, frankly. Uh, let's... <laughs> I mean, th think about this. I mean, this is astonishing. Who the hell are these people? And Kathy in Maine writes, Mike, personally, I'm sick to death of the patriarchal misogynistic voyeurism and blatant hypocrisy of the Bishop Pharaohs and the Republican bully thugs that continue to push for total control of every woman's life through domination of the uterus and the bedroom every damn day. It's another assault on the privacy of women and our bodies to think that the morality of contraception is being discussed by a bunch of sick, twisted men in a congressional hearing makes me nuts. Add to that a man actually saying that an aspirin held between the woman's knees is an inexpensive form of conception, contraception. Oh, my God. Is there some place we can put all these freaking wing nuts? Not one good thing can ever come of this ever-growing union of religious wackos and government thugs. Kathy in Maine. Now, I have a typewritten page in front of me, so I don't know if she was screaming, but I think she was. 
Oh, my God. This is just... Uh, but everybody should pay close attention. Do you understand? Women! Women, listen! You women who, who, who think you're Republican or think you're evangelical Christian, are you crazy? Are you mad? Are you insane? Can't you worship your God without having a man's nose in your vagina? Well, I don't know. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. But not the way they mean it. Oh. Oh, and, and something else. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Um. You ready? This is uh, uh, this is a little strong. Virginia is poised to send two of the most abhorrent anti-choice bills to Governor Bob McDonald to sign. The governor has indicated he will sign at least one, if not both. The first requires the use of transvaginal ultrasound prior to a woman obtaining an abortion. Transvaginal ultrasound. Do you know what that is? I have to tell you, I did not. Oh, of course you would, Kathy. I, I, in fact, uh, w- with all the children I've had, all the, now a couple of grandchildren, I have never heard the term transvaginal. According to the Guttmacher Institute, 88% of abortions occur during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. Because the fetus is so small at this stage, traditional ultrasounds perform through the abdominal wall the jelly on the belly thing, often cannot produce a clear image. Therefore, a transvaginal probe is most often necessary, especially up to 10 to 12 weeks of pregnancy. The probe is inserted into the vagina, sending sound waves to reflect off body structures to produce an image of the fetus. Under this new law, a woman's vagina will be penetrated without an opportunity for her to refuse due to coercion from the so-called public servants who passed in some rape. So, the person who wrote this article, Andy Kopsa, called and emailed Virginia governor's press secretary asking if the forced vaginal ultrasound bill would in fact overturn the rape statute. The press secretary did not return the writer's call. It's pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty astounding of uh, the level that the, uh, political discourse in this country has dropped to. And and I'm serious. Any woman who even considers voting for a Republican, um, you, are, you are so psychologically beaten down that you don't even control your own mind anymore. You really are. And, and that's understandable in this society. And it's understandable if you're married to a right-winger or if you're a Catholic or you're, if you're an Orthodox Jew, or if you are a fundamentalist uh, Protestant, it's understandable how you have been beaten to the point, psychologically beaten to the point where you will go vote for someone who will have the right to insert a probe into your vagina and take a look-see if you ever find yourself in the position of wanting an abortion for any reason. And you will vote for a man, Santorum, for president, who has stated categorically and on the record that he is against and would do anything to stop birth control. Because Rick Santorum and a lot of men understand one very essential fact. As long as women have access to birth control, they can screw like little bunnies and nobody will ever know, especially not the men who think they own them. If there's no birth control, there's always a chance that some other man's, mm, let's call it, footprint will be left at the scene of the crime. Right? Therefore, to fundamentalists, birth control is off the table. Too much freedom! Too much freedom! How do I know you're not taking birth control pills and screwing the milkman? 
So the alternative, transvaginal ultrasound with a metal probe. Lay down, woman. Spread your legs. Astonishing. Astonishing. All right. Um, that's graphic enough. I'm sure I have a lot of listeners out there who are saying, Jesus, God, that's enough, Malloy. Okay. What is worse, my talking about it or this passing into law in three states? What's worse? What do you think is worse? Can I see a show of hands? We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> 